In these documents, there are two kinds of things that I look for. One is the document as a whole and the sense of the person that comes through. What was this person like? And I think that one of the reasons that biography and autobiography are so fascinating is that we want to know what people were like in earlier times. And what better way to find that out than to listen to them speaking? It's important to know what people did, but also to listen to them speaking. I think that's what's intrinsically fascinating about personal narratives. Another thing that I'm interested in is the side issues. I've been a historian of women's work for a long time, and I'm very interested in midwives. When Schrader's memoirs emerged, it was especially exciting because she was not a midwife to royalty. The word of midwives to royalty were translated more frequently. This was a document that wasn't very well known until 15 years ago. So when I came to it, I was fascinated by what she had to say and by the fact that it's complete. The memoirs are only the most elaborate cases, but her own personal daybook, also available, had everything. There's so many cases that you could do quantitative work. 3,000 for people who work in the pre-modern period to have 3,000 of anything that you can count is remarkable. You could ask how many were breach presentations, how many were twins, how many were abnormal presentations of one kind or another. Schrader tells us who the father and mother are, so we can ask how many involved illegitimate births. Would a person who wasn't married have called a midwife? And what does the midwife have to say about this? What are the factual details about the cases? We find similar things in Glickel's memoir. It provides insight into her as a person, and she's a fascinating person. But it also provides a lot of detail about everyday business procedures of people who are not major merchants. She deals in gold. She deals in pearls. She deals in other high-cost goods, such as fur. You can get a sense from this. How does she travel? Where does she travel? Where does she stay? Does she stay in a stagecoach? Does she stay in inns? What was available for a Jewish woman traveling? She's a woman in a world that's largely made up of men. She's a middleman or middle woman between major importers and retailers. And she has very good business sense. How much business is she doing? What does this mean to her in economic terms? Glickel is writing in the Convention of Spiritual Autobiography. It's Jewish, but it's still spiritual autobiography, trying to talk about God in her life. Maybe the fact that she talks about God twice in one paragraph is because that's what's expected. And you have to ask, when you approach a personal narrative, what conventions of this kind of writing would the person know? And I think even people who are not highly learned know these conventions. Delving into the document for the first time, you see certain kinds of things. Many times, personal narratives are repetitive because they're written for a certain purpose and because our lives are repetitive. We do the same thing day after day. And if you're writing a personal narrative or a diary or memoir, you do the same thing day after day, so you can get bogged down in the details. If people are writing for a specific purpose, like a spiritual justification of their life, they will return to statements over and over because it fits their intent. I usually ask students to first read a narrative when they know nothing about the period, then I ask what they see. Then when they know something about it, the period or culture, they look at it again and I ask, what do you see that you didn't see the first time? 